wonderful people. How are you doing? How have you been? So today we have a different setup. I know you can notice that uh, because uh, we are dealing with companion dogs. And also we have a new breed in the show before that we haven't met. And that is the pug. Before I continue with this talk, I'll let my host introduce himself so that we get talk a little bit more sour sour and before i do that subscribe and also do not forget to hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video this is your girl linda kenyita and this is dog tv kenya the best documentary channel for all dog lovers and also remember that we have introduced vet corner so if you have any queries regarding the health of your dogs you can always ask us through our comment section or you can dm us through all our social media handles that is at dog tv kenya everywhere so let's go to our hosts good sir introduce yourself and introduce your companion we'll say they are companion dogs this is betsy kindly stop licking my face now betsy <laughs> my name is david this is lola she's a very gentle dog very awesome dog mm -hmm. As you can see, they like running around, rolling in the carpet. Mm -hmm. They are companion dogs, mm -hmm. very awesome dogs, very loyal dogs. Mm -hmm. um, pugs come from China originally. Mm -hmm. They are meant for the wealthy in that time. They are aristocrats, mm -hmm. people who had money. Mm -hmm. But as of now, anyone can own a pug. Mm -hmm. uh, it can keep you company. They have a pretty long lifespan, mm -hmm. 10 years. If you're lucky, maybe 12 to 15. Oh. But that is a very good lifespan. Mm -hmm. They also breathe a lot, as you can hear. It's not a pig, it's my pug. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you have such a breed, you won't ever be bored. Uh -huh. Yeah. I decided to go into companion dogs because they are rare species in Kenya as of now. Uh -huh. Not many dog breeders are doing it. Uh -huh. And it's also a good profit margin when you're doing business with them. Uh -huh. yeah. According to your experience having stayed with the pugs, first of all, tell us how long you've stayed with them. And according to your experience, like, who needs or who can stay with a pug and what do they need to know before they go say that now that's the dog i want um whoever who can stay with a pug is basically anyone interested in companion dogs if you feel depressed if you feel that you're lonely maybe your family is away on business or they live in another country of course you can't have your friends over on the in the house all the time watching football and making a ruckus but you can always stay with your dogs yeah, they, they keep you company, they're awesome pets, you can take walks with them, you can watch TV with them, <laughs> you can do basically everything with your dog. Okay. Now, I know a, a, a chihuahua can be aggressive, but what about a pug? Well, pugs are not so aggressive unless you threaten them or they're protecting their territory, because as you earlier saw when uh, I put both of them on my lap, she wanted to bite her mother, Lola was a bit aggressive towards Betsy. But with the time, they get used to each other. Now you see they are calm. Once you just show them that you're the park leader, you're the alpha male, they live alone and they obey your commands. They are very good dogs, very loyal dogs. Yeah. So for how long have you had them? I've had this one for four years, actually six years. She's the mother to Lola, she's Betsy. Then Betsy, she's been around for four years. I got them when Betsy was pregnant. She was pregnant with Lola and her other siblings. But now they've grown with me. They're part of the family. We really appreciate them. We love them so much. Uh, now, for the six years that you've stayed with Pugs, have you come across any health challenges? Um, personally, I have not. But from other people who are breeders as well as owners like me, they commonly have sinuses, hip dysplasia, the most common problem I faced is the obesity. They do not like exercise at all. If they don't like to be walked, they just like staying in the house, running in the compound, chasing birds, just small, small things. But if you take them for maybe a hike, not the best dog for a hike. They'll, you, as you can hear, they'll breathe a lot. They'll be distressed. So regular but small exercise, just keep a watch over your dog. If you've been watching us and we've been talking about exercising dogs, dogs require exercise and you're like, oh, Linda, that's too much work. You found your breed, yeah? <laughs> yes, if you want to stay in the house, watch movies, this is the best dog for you. Well, you'll have to buy a, a hi-fi sound system because of the breathing, but <laughs> this is the best dog for you if you're couch potato at home. 
maybe you're doing your business online, you need something to always keep you company, this is the best dog for you. Now, when it comes to their hygiene, uh, how is it, and also when it comes to maintaining their coat, how do we deal with that? Well, their hygiene, they're pretty clean dogs, as long as you train them on how to do their business outside, they, that's pretty much it. Uh, they shed a lot, so you'll need a brush and a roller to pick up their fur. Maybe invest in a vacuum cleaner, which is not so expensive. But basically, pretty easy work. You can wash them once or twice a week and brush them, take them for grooming, which will also assist them. Yeah, and it will be okay. Now, you've mentioned that they can get overweight. So, what's their diet and how often? And also to regulate the... Um, Wheat, how do you deal with that? So I feed them with uh, kibble and maybe sausage uh, for dogs. Sometimes I also prepare for them meals like I do for myself. When I'm cooking myself meat, I'll prepare for them some meat as well, just to change their diet and keep them uh, in line with uh, diet regulations, keep them healthy, give them different types of nutrients. But what I never do is I never feed my dog uh, any pre-made, uh, what do you call it, dog food that is in powder form mm -hmm. uh, because most of them we find that they have aflatoxin issues, some don't have the necessary uh, vitamins that you need for your dog, maybe your dog is pregnant, you need to give it some type of food, yeah, so I just vary their food. When they give birth, I tend to find any sort of puppy food that is highly nutritious, mm -hmm. that is what I give them. What about when it comes to maintaining the health? So how many times should I be feeding this dog? So, and also, like, uh, when it gains weight, like that extra weight, what do I do? Okay, I feed them twice a day. Uh, regular feeding twice a day. Uh, during the day when maybe I'm out, of, out going to work and stuff like that, because I have my own compound, I can leave them outside to run around to get that little bit of exercise that they need because they want to be always sitting in one spot, you know? And also they need that change of t temperature, change of scene. They need to run around in the dirt. They need to eat grass sometimes, as all dogs do. So I think you should just uh, see what works for you. Because you might be living in an apartment block, you don't have the same uh, freedoms that I do as of now. So maybe when you get out of work in the evening, take a short walk with your dog. Make sure at least he walks for like two, five minutes, ten minutes. 20 minutes maximum, then take your dog back to the house. My name is Dr. Steven Omari from Linden Vet Clinic, Utawala. Today's topic is uh, new pet owner or the first time pet owners. Uh, normally, the first pet owners, they get uh, some difficulties in owning a pet. One, feeding. Feeding a puppy or a dog, let's say starting from a puppy, a puppy is supposed to be fed three times, morning, lunch, and evening. In the morning, it's supposed to get some milk and bread. Lunch, is supposed to get minced meat and rice and some vegetables. The same applies in the evening. Grooming. Grooming of the puppy is supposed to have uh, every week, you do once with the shampoo towel, brush, and then after you wash the dog, you wash the dog with warm water. After you wash the dog, you dry. If it's cold system, you can use a, a broad dryer. Then you go to, you go to toileting. Some new pet owners, they get hard time to train their pets how to, how to do the toilet, because they do anywhere. So first, you need to train your pet or your dog or your puppy to eat specific time. Once you do a specific time, you make the dog to train itself when to do the poop. Like if you do in the morning, like a puppy is supposed to do the poop the next five to ten minutes. So at that time, you know exactly the puppy is doing the poop at five minutes and then you know where to do the to do you know where to take the puppy to. At the same time, you need to, if, if you train your dog or a puppy, the specific time you are feeding, you'll notice if the dog is sick, all is okay. When he's not eating the specific food you are giving and specific quantity, 
then you notice uh, the dog is sick. Once you notice that particular time, then you can call a vet and then they can give you the advice. Thank you. Now, when it comes to dealing with the park so far, what are the challenges that you have come across? Um, the main challenge that usually bothers me a lot is the shedding. As you can see, I'm full of hair right now. <laughs> but that is not such a big challenge compared to what I've seen in other pugs. Mm -hmm. When you overbreed your dog, you might get a, a, an instance where it has a prolapse. Mm -hmm. Prolapse is where the insides of your dog come out from the backside. It is not so good for an animal. It's highly painful. It's not so good and very, very costly when you go to a vet. Mm -hmm. Also, they have sinuses. As you can hear, she's snorting a lot. Uh, this is because of heat, uh, maybe excessive exercises but they usually have a problem with their nose when they are born. That's how they are bred. They, they have low sense of smell. Yeah, they have issues, a lot of issues. They can also get hip dysplasia, but most of these issues come when you inbreed the dog or when you come from a breeder that, uh, when you get a puppy from a breeder who has inbred their dog, then it can come with the arising issues as with any animal, yeah. No, I, I have this question now. I'm thinking about like you said, like you go to work and you leave them outside. But what if you leave them inside? Are they trained to stay inside on their own? Or will they make a mess? My dogs are usually trained to stay inside on their own. They can stay without making a mess. I've also trained them that when they need to do anything, they can go in the bathroom where it's a more controlled area and they can do whatever they want inside there leaving my living room clean, my bedroom clean, and all my things clean. I've trained them not to rip up my stuff. <laughs> yeah, they don't eat my shoes. They don't eat my beddings. Yeah, basically they're very nice dogs as long as you train them. And also just be kind to your animal. Remember it also has feelings, especially pugs. Uh, what I experienced with Lola one time when she was giving birth, she couldn't take it when I separated her from my house. I actually put her in another house because I was traveling. She literally cried. Dog Pugs are highly emotional dogs. They are highly connecting dogs. When you bond with them, you bond the, with them for life. So it's better to just love them, take care of them, appreciate them. Yeah. Also, I know that there are dogs that, especially companion dogs, that bond with the owner or they choose a family member to bond with and then they cannot bond with anyone else in the house. Uh, how is the pug any different or does it interact with every f member of the family, if I get it, if we are in a family setup? The pug, uh, unlike the chihuahua, interacts with everyone. As you can see, she loves you already on the first day of meeting you. As long as you have a good vibe about you, as long as you love the animal, as long as you're not, uh, well, as long as you're not mean to the animal. <laughs> Yeah, basically they'll just show you love as you can see. She'll lick you, she'll do a lot of things that will just make you smile and happy. Yeah. Also, I, I'm sure like um, this thing, like I get asked like, Linda, aren't you afraid you're going to catch diseases when the dogs are, are, are licking you? Now, maybe you can touch on uh, the, the steps you've taken to ensure that your dogs are safe for you, also for you. Uh, I usually vaccinate them once they're born. There's three vaccines. You have the parvovirus, you have the DHLP, and you have the rabies. I usually do that. Then the rabies I give them yearly. I deworm them at least every three months when they're adults. So that even when they lick me, even when they do their business in the bathroom, in whatever way I'm handling my dogs, I'm safe. I make sure I take them to grooming maybe once a month. And then personally, I wash them twice a week. Every three days I make sure I wash my dog to just keep them clean, smelling nice, so that my house also doesn't smell like a wet dog or something. But they're just clean, they're just nice, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Which I can say, I'm in mean, this house, it's not smelly, so don't go asking me those questions you usually ask. Yes, the house is not smelly. Now, I know before you got the pugs, you had uh, some other breeds which are bigger also bigger breeds now how how was the transition and also how does the pug generally relate with other dog breeds uh, the pug is a very intelligent dog very close family dog well i have other bigger breeds as of now i have a rochella and a reshiva they are awesome dogs very aggressive but the pug is also challenging in that she doesn't fear anyone anything 
So she just made friends with them by being stubborn. Mm-hmm. She's a stubborn person. <laughs> She's also stubborn. Very stubborn. So and cheeky. So their friends they got used to each other slowly and slowly because I just acclimated them. I just made sure that I am the leader in the situation. I control the situation. I don't allow my big dogs to bite the small dogs. It is unfortunate sometimes it does happen, but you just have to be aware of what your dog can and cannot do because uh, most of these large breeds are also territorial. So you just have to be aware of what your dog wants and needs and yeah. Also I think which also leads to my next question. Maybe somebody has a big breed at home or a security dog at home. Uh have you had any challenges when it has come to now making like having big breeds and small breeds? Uh, the main challenge I have is because uh my big breeds are very aggressive. I have big rottweilers and uh, as m- most of you already know and if you don't uh, now you'll know rottweilers are very aggressive, very territorial, very loving as well. They protect the family that they are uh living with that they are pets of but i don't consider my dogs as pets they are just family members yeah extensions of my family they are awesome i love them so much yeah but uh, if you have big breeds just ensure that if your dog is very very aggressive you create a separate partition for your big dog away from your small dog but if your big dog grew up with the uh, small breeds maybe with the cat even then it might be a good idea to acclimate the new dog to them show them who is who and they will decide their hierarchy on their own yeah i i, I hope if you're thinking of getting a companion dog you've taken some lessons at least you've introduced a new breed so actually i'm happy Every time I meet a new breed, I'm extra extra happy and that's an extra point for me. So, thank you for sticking with me and staying with me this far. If you do want to partner with us, kindly send us an email via kenyadogtv@gmail.com or you can always DM us at all our social media handles that is at dog tv kenya if you haven't subscribed kindly do so and also do not forget to hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video i'm your girl linda kenyita and this is dog tv kenya the best documentary channel for all dog lovers till the next one see ya